So this is the R data retrieval session. Um, it's a platform for downloading, cleaning, and installing publicly available data sets. I'm Henry Senyondo. I'm a research software developer at the University of Florida. And specifically, I work at the Ecology Lab, which is one of the best research units at the, at the university. And as scientists, we do a lot of data processing, and we know the data processing workflow. Uh, it usually starts with acquiring data. We clean and format, reformat the data. We combine the data, visualize it, and analyze it. And all these parts take different amounts of time. So scientists spend quite a lot of time during acquiring of data. They're, they spend more time even during the cleaning of the data. and we could utilize that time in these other aspects like analyzing data and creating the cool science. So the R data retriever is that tool that will help us um, spend less time in acquiring and cleaning, but more time in analyzing the data sets and coming up with all this cool science. And this is what we actually produce after using the R data retriever. We, we noticed that Less time is used in acquiring the data, cleaning the data, and more time is for the scientists available to visualize and analyze their data sets and come up with uh, the cool solutions to all the pro uh, problems that we have. So data processing in particular is time consuming. We know that. Um, and why is that so? There, there are a large number of, of, of formats. Uh, we have data packaged in XML files, CSV files, tabular data sets. We have data that is zipped, provided as zips, um, these compressed files, which is .zip or maybe tar and other versions. And even if we have a grid upon standards, um, there is lack of that standard of following up on those grid upon standards to provide these data packages. And when it comes to trying to actually clean it, we as scientists, we know that everyone can clean data and we always create our own data cleaning code, right? And what happens is that every data package eventually has its data cleaning code. And now we're increasing the amount of time that we, we, we actually use on cleaning or acquiring the data, but actually searching for these kind of packages and debugging them at times because software always breaks and it I, I always say it grows by night. So data processing is also unstable. Everyone writes their own code, but data updates could change the changes due to format. There are changes, maybe the URL has been moved. For example, recently people have been moving their data packages on GitHub from master to main. Uh, so the data processing code for regularly updating updated data frequently breaks. And uh, when it comes to tooling, that's really frustrating because you end up getting your whole pipeline uh, broken down because of these problems. And so how can the R data retriever actually help? So the R data retriever can download your data sets. It can clean them and install all the open data sets with one line of code onto some of your um, data storage engines, right? So data sets in the R data retriever are provided uh, in form of JSON files. Uh, these are kind of like uh, specifications. They try to understand or attribute properties of the data, like maybe the data has a version, um, Maybe it has a license, it has a URL where we can find the data, and it has this kind of meta specification of like which files are in maybe a zip folder. And then we also provide custom scripts for really kind of like arbitrary complex cleaning or restructuring tasks where the data is so complicated that we actually have to try to, to do some tailoring of the data so that we could get uh, an instance that could be ingested into the platform. Similar, this is basically similar to a packet manager for software, um, but this time it's for your data. How is that so? Because a single person comes out and figures out how to solve um, the data, how to clean the data. He creates a recipe. This recipe is shared 
to everyone else and what happens is that if something changes in the recipe it's automatically delivered to all the users just from one single um, uh, recipe change so um, let's get an overview of what we're actually dealing with so the R data retriever um, collects all these data sets from all the public sources we you know we have many public sources some are domain specific uh, some are just uh, kind of like uh, data science specific for example cargo um, USGS is basically science uh, forest service gives you all those data sets and there are many many repositories where we can find publicly sorry publicly available data sets so the R data retriever comes in and cleans these data sets restructures them in the best way possible for you to analyze and puts them in R obviously and if you want to use them as data frames you can go ahead or you can actually go ahead and store them in some of the data storage engines we support several data storage engines SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, flat file storage systems like CSV, Excel, JSON, GeoJSON so there are many very many supported um, platforms with this uh, uh, with this tool so just to go ahead and show you how the processing is this may be a little bit um, kind of like hard to show but um, we have several data sets and how do we do that a simple run will be initially loading the library reticulate which we're using uh, reticulate is one of those uh, underlying uh, libraries that we use in the R data retriever so we load reticulate and um, we load, um, just it's starting up again. So we load reticulate and we load our data retriever and it provides several functions and you can see what kind of functions you want to use, install in CSV or maybe do a check uh, for updates. So right now we're running data sets. We want to see how many data sets we have. Uh, currently we have approximately reaching the 300 uh, unique data sets. Um, and you could understand, many people would be worried about, okay, you have several data sets, but how do I find the data set that I want to actually use? So data sets are usually categorized by maybe keywords or something and retriever the same. You could run retriever, our data retriever data set and give it a, a keyword. Maybe I want data sets with birds or with plants and it will give you all these data sets and you can go to the website and look at uh, maybe the citation, we provide the citation, we provide the description, and you could find the data set that you want to actually use. Um, so uh, a sample run on how to, 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 to install the data would be retriever install CSV where we're installing Iris. Uh, it produces, I think it has 151 um, at, uh, um, rows or data rows, and then we and in another case, we would want to actually create a data frame, maybe from a data set called portal. So we say uh, retriever, sorry. So retriever uh, fetch portal, and it gives you, um, it tells you you have installed the data and we have three uh, files, which is main plots and species. And you could go ahead and actually look at what you have as the data frame and uh, Right now, it would show you a little bit of uh, what is in, in portal, it's a list, and um, what kind of data is in there, and it will give you basically what you have, right? So if we go back to where this our data retriever comes from, um, basically, we have three main uh, data processing we, we provide three major data science languages. Um, it's basically written in Python, which is the core tool. Uh, and then we have the R package, which is the R data retriever. It's a wrapper on the Python core tool that uh, uses reticulate under the hood. And then we have the Julia package, which is also the Julia retriever, but um, it uses a pi call to call uh, instances from Python. Uh, so if you're using any of these languages, you can actually have the same functionality in any of those languages. So when you're producing, uh, when you're processing data and dealing with all these uh, data science things, um, we always have a problem of uh, trying to reproduce a, 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 
an analysis we did in the past, right? Well, the R data retriever has that functionality. It tries to give you a snapshot of an analysis you did with the code and recipes. It all packets them all together so that it's kind of like how versioning works, um, git versioning, but this time it's for your whole reproducible um, pipeline. So you could get the data, commit it, get the scripts, commit it. It keeps all the versions together so that in the future, if you're trying to analyze data and the data has changed so much, you're trying to understand why the results have changed, the data has changed, you could go back to a day that you actually committed this data set and try to reproduce the same. And this is a very good uh, uh, part of uh, people who write papers and you provide a paper and somebody does the analysis and is like, oh no, uh, I think we have different analysis uh, based on the data. You can go back to that same, same place and rerun re everything. Um, so that is cool. And this is a sample of how it runs. Um, for example, Retriever, we are committing portal and we're saying, okay, I'm committing it and I'm at the CSV conference today. And maybe later on, I will try to find out uh, what I committed that day. So a few days back, it gives me, after a few a few runs, it gives me a commit message, it gives me a hash number. So this hash number and the message that has been committed and the date can be used to actually install it in the future. So a few days pass and I want to install the same analysis using the same code uh, because code always changes. Maybe somebody in, in the, the, the provider, the data package provider added a new column and I want to see what happened. So you could come into the R data retriever and say, okay, install that portal and use that hash number. It will install the same data and give it to you and you could go through the files and see what is what is actually happening. Um, yeah, I think, um, so that is uh, that is when it has finished installing the new data set. Uh, so coming to to the end, uh, the R data retriever brings about robustness in data processing, right? Uh, how how do we handle that? Um, we know that updates always happen, um, and they always even still break the underlying re recipes that we have. But we do a weekly monitoring of those data sets to check for breaking changes uh, then we because of it's a community based uh platform people can come in and say oh i'm working on this data set it's iris and it's breaking and we could figure out why it's breaking maybe there's a change in version so we keep on updating the version and we keep on updating the data so that somebody who installed 1.0 doesn't uh can understand that 2.0 has a difference in in the data because of um, a change in column. Uh, so it allows people to quickly fix these things. And when a recipe is, is fixed, we automatically send the updates to people. You can literally go into your R data retriever tool and say, get updates, and it will tell you, okay, this, this has been updated, this. Um, so with that continuous, it continues to run even even with the, with, with the changes in the data or format or the location. And that's something cool with this because if, if everyone doesn't have to develop their own packages and we have a one stand, standard platform that can clean the data sets and people maintaining it. And this is the, the, the one of those great tools, I think, in reproducing science and getting the work, 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 workflow uh, at, at an optimal standard. So with that being said, if you have any questions, if you want to check out the tool, you can come up to the homepage. Um, I also want to thank all the funding uh, organizations that have made this, um, uh, have, have, have helped us get to this point. Um, I want to thank all the contributors that have actually put in time to actually get this to evolve from the smallest part that we had right now we're going to several data sets and covering most of the open source publicly available data sets and i think that's a great way to to go ahead uh, so thank you very much if you have any questions
Thank you so much. I uh, just want to check really quickly if there's uh, questions in the audience uh, from anyone in the audience. Uh, if not, um, can I ask, how, I wasn't sure if I, I missed this earlier or not about uh, data data sets um, that are are maintained for for connections and breaks. Is there a like a stable list, or can anyone, uh, or does it apply to any data set that someone's using? Oh, can you ask again? Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I I, I may have missed this part about um, stable data. Uh, the data sets that are 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 tracked by our data retriever is there a state like a stable list oh people... yeah so what happens yeah. is that um so because data always changes right we are running mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to provide that platform too uh so that people can actually look up that we have a dashboard which is called the retriever dashboard what is this is doing basically it runs it runs these data sets every day like retriever install iris and if we check the hash numbers of these data sets. Is the hash number the same or does the hash number change? And a change in the hash number will tell you that the data set is faulty. So it will flag that as a faulty, uh, as a data set that has changed, or it's either erroring or it's not. So we come in and look at maybe somebody has changed the URL. Maybe new data set has been introduced into the data. And is it the data that we expect every day to accumulate? For example, we have a data set we just installed and it's called uh, New, York, New York Times COVID-19. And this data set keeps on changing every day. It has the same URL, that's the good thing, that, but it keeps being added on, data be, keeps being added on. So we, we know that that is a change because of the data, but there's some data sets, for example, Iris is a standard data set that has been there forever, right? And if mm -hmm. something fails, it's not that because they've added new data, it's because maybe the location has changed, right? And those are things that we can track and be able to solve at that instance, uh, at least before people get into problems with their tools. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yep. Um, I think that's the time that we have for, for questions for this presentation, but I definitely wanted to um, invite people to continue the conversation in the Slack channels. And yep. uh, would you be uh, willing to answer those questions in Slack? Yeah, I'm going to uh, jump onto Slack. Uh, I'll be able to answer most of the questions that pop. All right. Thank you very much for the great presentation. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending this amazing conference.